we have a simmer flame right here that has a very, very low flame coming out. And that stove, I've run across two or three of them now made by GE. They get grease in between the two pieces of the burner and the simmer flame is what grounds out the spark. Or it causes a problem with the lighting because the gas is not shooting out there and the, and the spark igniter is not hitting it. We've had to take them off and had to scrape the grease. The grease actually turns like to a black tar. Mm. At one point, we just replaced all the burner heads. Everything was working just fine. But you see it sparking. We, we, I was with Marvin on that call, by the way, that we saw that um, the gas pressure was good, the sparks working. You could light the burner with a match or a lighter, but it wouldn't light with the igniter. And the spark was jumping where you want it to jump. But the simmer flame, this one doesn't have it. This is the cheaper burners. Simmer flame was right in the middle here. If that's not good, it's not working. We don't have one of those here, but that's important. So we set power here. If both of them are not working and you have 110 here, the module's back. Okay, so you have to check those things out. It's very simple to check those out. Now, simmer. Where did I put my that? Oh, here. The gas valve. We talked about the gas valve. On some of these valves, I'm going to pass it around. You probably can't really see it, but the, the shaft of this valve is open. Okay? It's not shown in here, but this is hollow, and it goes all the way down to here, and you find a little screw right here. That's a simmer flame. And what that is, is you take and you turn, turn the gas burner on and you put it to the lowest position and you adjust that screw so that your flame is just, just, just barely coming off the tip like that. Flame should be about three quarters of an inch to, to almost an inch in length. Should be like this. It should be 99% or so blue with a little yellow or, 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 or whitish tip. If it's too yellow, you don't have enough oxygen and too much gas. It's just like your oxyacetylene torches. If you have too much gas and not enough oxygen, it's not, yeah. gonna, it's not gonna be blue and you're gonna have black soot everywhere. Yeah. Okay, so this simmer is only adjusted when the unit is set to its lowest flame height. And what simmer is, is like they're cooking but now they're done cooking, but they want to sort of keep it warm or just, just keep it hot. Almost like when you go to a party and they have those aluminum pans and they have that sterno can mm -hmm. underneath. They don't want to cook the food. They just want to keep the food hot. So that's what the simmer flame is. Okay? So that's how we take a look at that. So we did the oven valve. Let's take a look at the regulator. I didn't get a picture of the regulator, but I have one here. We talked about the regulators on the, um, on the gas dryer. Gas comes in one side, it comes out two different openings on this regulator. One goes directly to the oven safety valve, which we had on, uh, on the table here, and the other one runs up top to the manifold here. Okay? This is where the burner cap is. Some of these caps, you take them off and you flip the whole cap over when you're going from one gas to the other. This particular one has a little plastic piece, just a little piece of plastic, yes. okay? It's like a little cap, all right? This goes inside the regulator. When the cap is open here and goes over the spring like that, what is that, natural or LP? <coughs> natural. The LP, remember the dryer had that, that we did that dryer lecture, had that pin that pushed yeah. down mm -hmm. on the spring. When you flip the cap over and you put the part in here that pushes down on the spring, that's for LP. Mm -hmm. So when a customer buys a stove or a dryer, it's coming set up for natural. You have to take the cover off here, mm -hmm. flip the cap, Okay, in this case, you're not flipping the cap, you're flipping the plastic piece. That snaps into the cap. It has little, little clips here and it snaps right in. You twist and turn it. 
So you twist and turn it, and then when you screw this in, it pushes down on the spring. And now it's set for LP. So you have to do this. You have to go to every burner, either adjust or replace the orifice, and do what to the air shutter? Open it wide up. If you look at this oven safety valve here, this is an adjustable orifice. When you come for natural, the orifice is going to be all the way up. We want to tighten it down. It's very important when you tighten this orifice not to over tighten on that spud. Let's go back to that picture here. So what it is, is you're tightening. If you look at these jagged lines here, that's just threads. When you screw it down, you don't want to like tighten it. You'll damage this little spiral uh, spud in here, and then you won't have the gas swirling out like you're supposed to. You'll damage the valve. So what you do is you turn it till it stops turning, and that's it. Sometimes you might have to back it off like an eighth of a turn or a quarter of a turn. You're done. You want to light it up? Take a look at your flame. Now, the oven flame is not like the top of a stove. When you put the stove on and you put it on high, you have a big flame. When you put the flame, when you put it on low, the flame gets smaller. The oven flame is always the same size, whether I put it to 500 degrees or to 150 degrees. The flame is only coming off the tip here about uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch. And then you have a shield here, which the flame rises up. The only difference from 150 to 500 degrees is it just stays on until that thermostat says it's hot and shuts it off. So this flame in your oven doesn't change size depending on the temperature that you set it. It's either on or off. Okay. So you're going to get a lot more cycles at a lower temperature than you are at a higher temperature. Well, yeah. I guess you would say that it would shut off a lot faster mm -hmm. than, than that. So, and then the temperature dropping is the same either way. Mm -hmm. So again, it's very important. You look at this voltage and amperage on this valve when you're, when you're working on them. So you know how much voltage it takes to open it. These numbers here are important. When you check voltage across this valve, it tells you right on the valve, I need three volts, 3.03 to 3.3 volts or 3.3 to 3.6 amps. When we check amperage, we clamp around only one wire. If you clamp around two wires or more, you're not gonna get a reading. Mm -hmm. What happens is electricity flows through one wire one way, flows through another wire the other way. When we check amperage around a wire like this, what it's measuring is as electricity flows through the wire, it creates a magnetic field in the air. Okay, the more electricity, the bigger the magnet. Yeah. But if you put two wires going the opposite way, the two magnetic fields cancel each other out, the meter can't read it. So you can't go across a power cord like this to nope. measure amperage, it just don't work. You have to go down where the wires in the oven break up to a single wire, and that's how you do it. Okay? Anybody any questions on these components? Okay, well, when you guys are doing these gas stoves, I want you to do these amperage tests and these voltage tests on these valves. Okay, look for these voltages. Make sure you have a better meter than that one, because that one didn't read the right voltage. Could be reading the right voltage. What if my outlet wasn't proper? But you're getting uh, the proper amperage reading. Not the proper amperage reading. I should have the proper voltage, but if I don't, Shouldn't I check the voltage in the wall? Yes. Even though the amperage is good, but not the voltage, I need to check the wall first to see if my wall is proper. But with a different meter? Or yes. Okay. Well, I've used both meters. So I want to know my meter is good, because otherwise I'm going to throw it in the trash. Because it's not reading the right voltage, it's no good to me, right? Yeah. All right. So that's how you test these components out. I'm not lighting them up today or whatever. We'll do that another day. Any questions on these components? No? Okay, guys, go back to do your shop works.